Hello Cambridge and welcome to Fresh Ideas from Whole Foods Market. This is Chicken 101 for one. <laughs> Hi. All right, so thanks for tuning into our show. We're so happy to be here. This is Carrie Allard. She's the demo specialist from the Fresh Pond store. So excited to have you here, Carrie. Very excited to be here. And I'm Matt Keller, the marketing and community li liaison for the Cambridge and Somerville locations. So Carrie, tell us a little bit about your job and what you do at Fresh Pond and what you're gonna do today. Okay, well, I am the demo specialist uh, and I cook samples as well as organize uh, vendors coming into the store and doing their demos and some uh, store-wide tasting events. Ooh, fun. Yes. Mm -hmm. I love events. Okay, so today's <laughs> show. <laughs> All right, so on today's show. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to learn how to break down a chicken, uh, the parts of a chicken, save those bones for stocks. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to make a recipe, panko crusted chicken cutlets, and I'm going to share with you some tips for making the perfect crust. Uh, because if you're anything like me, when you first started, your crust just fell off into the pan and oh, you were very sad. Bad. <laughs> and then... Uh, that was me all the time. <laughs> it does. Well, I'll show you this, the magic. Thanks. And, I love and magic. we're going to do a simple pan sauce. Okay. Okay. Ooh, so I'm let's, excited. Yes. So let's get started. <laughs> okay. So uh, at Fresh Pond, you can uh, just snag these whole chickens. Um, we also have them behind the counter and they're already opened up for you. Uh, what you're going to do when you get home is you're going to do it over the sink, open up the bag, and I have one already done. Ta-da! That was easy. <laughs> okay. uh, you're going to pat it dry, and inside you might have a little present. Uh, these are the giblets, and you can use these to make stock, you would just want to uh, not use the chicken liver for making stock okay. because it will it will turn it a little bit bitter. But oh, okay. the but the other things inside um, are great. If you're squeamish, then just throw it away. And so, what else can you do with the chicken liver? Is there other stuff? You can save them and make chicken liver mousse. Ooh. You will be saving for quite a bit <laughs> before you have <laughs> enough to make. Is there tiny little chicken livers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but okay. you, but you can um, and okay. keep it in your freezer and you're good. Okay. So uh, so we're gonna break down the chicken and uh, again, if you go to the store. Uh, any butcher can break it down for you, no extra charge, but it's so simple. Let's uh, let's show you how to do it. Okay, so this is the top of the chicken. There's a wishbone right here, and the arms run right along the sides. And then we have a keel bone that we're going to uh, cut down either side to get the chicken breast. Okay, so we're gonna okay. pop up a graphic so you can see a little bit more what I'm talking about. You can see in the bottom left-hand corner, those are, if you, I believe, 10 pieces, if <laughs> you broke down the chicken, don't check my math. It looks like, it looks like a little dancing chicken, <laughs> yeah. doesn't it? Yes, and, and that's the, the back of the chicken. Um, and yeah, you can see the yeah, chicken breast. And then if you look up at the top, you see the keel bone. That is what we're aiming on the either side. And we're removing the wishbone right now. So as, as you speak. Yes. So we're going to find the wishbone with our fingers. OK. You can feel along the side and you're going to make an incision. Doesn't have to be pretty, you just got to find it with your fingers. And then, there we go. See that? There okay. it is. Now follow it up along the top, and then make another incision for the other side. So you're just cutting along the side, yep. and that just lets it right out. Yep, and then so you're just using your fingers. Okay. There we go. And you're going to just break that open. Don't worry about the little bit of toughness. You're not going to harm the chicken. It's already dead. <laughs> okay, so wishbone. Ooh, wishbone! Yay! That was my favorite part of holiday gatherings. Woo -hoo. <laughs> okay, so now that the wishbone is free, now we can cut straight along the keel bone with no resistance whatsoever. Okay. So, we've done that, and you'll see right here, this is the chicken breast, and then underneath is the chicken tender, and then underneath that is 
the rib or R, the ribs. And then you're going to take your knife flat against the bones and you're just gonna release the chicken breast from the ribs. And so you're going for the breast first yep. and then the tenders after? Or yes. Are you doing it all at I'm once? doing it all at once. Okay. Um, and to help you along here, just cut right here. That's literally just a little skin holding that together. So now you can see it's almost completely free, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then the little tricky part, and it's not that tricky, is getting it along where the wing meets. And if you just feel along here, and then just cut. You're never going to be cutting through bone. You're, you're always going to just let the chicken tell you where to cut. Oh, okay. Yes. That's why I was always worried about breaking out chicken, because I thought I had to cut the bones and get those special scissors. Right, yeah, and I mean, if you have a big cleaver, then, you know, go for it, but you do not need one. Okay, and then right around here, you'll start seeing, there we go, you'll see where the, the wing actually meets uh, the chicken, but you can just leave that wing attached and cut the chicken breast free. What? Ta -da! It's a chicken breast. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm gonna remove the skin now because my recipe doesn't call for the skin. Mm. And you can save that, freeze it, make schmaltz if you want. Ooh. Okay, so then you're left with the chicken breast and the tender attached. Again, I'm gonna remove the chicken tender and put it aside. That makes a nice Scooby snack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can cook it up while you're uh, preparing the rest of the chicken. But right now we're gonna get back to the chicken. So the tender is just the tender because it's more tender? Uh, nope, it's just <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, just called the chicken tender. Um, I'm not sure why. Uh, there might be a reason behind it, but that used to be, that is what a true chicken tender looks like if you're going to be uh, making it. Um, and okay. I, once you break down the whole chicken, you'll have two, which is a perfect amount for just frying it up, putting it, or pan sauteing it, and putting it over a salad or pasta. And then that's oh. one meal right there. One meal right there. Yeah. So then the rest, the chicken, um, you can let the gravity do the work. And you'll always be able to kind of see. See? Look at that. Mm, Boom. Right there. Literally no so resistance. Easy. Yeah. Now, this is the wing. If you're going to save the wings, um, to make wings and uh, put them in the freezer, you can do that. If you're going to do that, just take this wing tip off because that is not anything worth saving. Oh, really? Yeah, just add it to the stock bag. Um, and if you're going to make wings, then you can leave them whole or you can just cut them. And then again, you're going to let the chicken tell you where it's going. Okay, pop. And then now you know. And you have a wing and a little drumming. Yeah, I'm not going to remove this for now. Okay. I'm not going to use this. And then the rest of the chicken is just legs, and it's really just being held together by this one uh, joint right here, and you're just going to pop. Okay? So now that you've popped, you know where to cut. Presumably. <laughs> this chicken is being sneaky. Is it? A little bit. Sometimes you get the sneaky chickens. You really do. Okay, so Even see. Even specialists. Yes. So, I can hear it. There we go. So now this joint is exposed, and now I know where it is. I cut that, and now you have a chicken leg, and you can leave it whole. And this is the perfect time, not today, since it's raining, but uh, you can start thinking about grilling. Uh, so season this up, save it for later. We're not going to do any recipes with this guy. Uh, but if you want to cut the leg from the thigh, it's really easy. Mother Nature actually gave you a little cheat sheet on here. There's kind of a line, if you can, yeah. Okay. There's a little bit of a line right here, and you can feel it too. You're going to err on the side of the drumstick, and you're just going to right there. Oh, See? So, there you go. Yep. So no bones, Perfect. just a nice thigh mm -hmm. and drumstick. How easy. Yes. And okay. Perfect for the barbecue. Yes. So, All right. uh, so now you, we have the chicken breasts. Yes. All and, free. Yes. And once you do, um, once you do both sides, save that, save those bones um, in a freezer bag, put it in the freezer bag, and you're going to make stock with it. Okay. Which will come into play a little later on. Ooh. 
Okay, so the chicken breast is thicker on one side, obviously. Um, so you're going to just want to even it out. You can just pound it. I always find that I break the meat when I do that. So I like to just cut it and horizontally. And so does the meat not taste as good? No, or no. does it have a different texture? No, uh, it does tenderize it. Yeah. Uh, it tastes just the same. I just don't like how frayed it gets when I just pound on it. Okay. So I'm going to do a nicer just cut. This is where my cut glove comes in handy. Cut gloves. Yep. And then we're just going to just slice it right along here. And now we have two beautiful cutlets, and that's fine. It's a little, you know. Uh, okay, so now we're going to season these with salt. Okay. Yes. So a little salt. You're just using what kind of salt? Just this kosher, kosher salt? salt. Uh -huh. Of course, sir. Yep, fine. kosher salt. Just uh, the Morton's kosher salt that we have right here. Can oh, you okay. hold that up? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So this might seem like a lot of salt. However, can you hand me a bag, please? Yes. Okay. Uh, what's what's happening right here is uh, the salt is actually going to work um, at a level where. Do you want to open? Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm helping. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So basically, uh, because of the <clears throat> the way. The chicken is you're, you're salting it and then there's osmosis that's working it's pulling water from the chicken cells and it's uh mixing with the salt dissolving and you're breaking down the muscles which makes for a tender and juicy chicken so Ooh. that's key to salt now okay osmosis yes okay so we're gonna so now it's salt yes okay so we're going to go into the perfect panko crested recipe uh and i'm going to show you how to make it neat and clean so you don't wind up like this <laughs> with <Aww>. chicken <laughs> breadcrumb hands. Chicken breadcrumb hands. Yes. You don't want that. No. I don't okay. want that. Okay, so um, you're going to you're going to let those uh, chicken breasts rest for about 20 minutes, and I have some that I pre-did here. Oh, perfect. Yes. So, so what if you forget? Can you leave them salting for an hour. That's fine. Is that okay? um, yeah, that's fine. I would just, uh, ask, if it's over 20 minutes, just do it up in the refrigerator. So these have actually been salted overnight. Totally fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, totally fine. Okay. And then we're going to do the bag method, which is a bag of all purpose flour, just two tablespoons. Okay. And then a bag of panko, which is uh, about a cup. And then we have. Um, my egg wash, which is one egg with two tablespoons of water. Now the trick, and um, the reason why this works is because we're going to shake off as much as the flour. The egg wash is as thin as possible. Okay. And the panko will then adhere and it won't fall off in the pan. Oh. And then you have a nice light ready and it's not like too thick. Exactly. It's not all clumpy. Exactly. So now that I don't need my cut gloves anymore. We're going to let my hand dry off a little. <laughs> okay, so do you want to do the honors and hold this open? Yes. Perfect. I'm holding the flower. Okay. okay. Now. Do I get to shake it? Yep. Shake it. Perfect. Okay. And then now, this is where the bag comes in handy. There's flour on, and then we're going to shake it completely while it's in the bag, and it's going to remove all There's not flour everywhere. of the excess flour. So you have this beautiful, Yay. lightly floured piece, and then we put it into the egg wash that has uh, water in it to thin it out, and then, okay, and we're just gonna do one full one, and then we're gonna pop the recipe up so that you can see. You wanna hold that bag open? Yes. Okay, so this is what I do. Scrape one side, and then the other removes most of the egg wash, okay. and then whoop. Okay, okay, shake, shake, shake. shake. Uh. Okay, thank you. And then, yeah, okay. <laughs> and then you can see in the bag if you have any bare spots, you just pat that down. Okay, so now let's put the recipe up, and I'll do the second chicken top. Oh, okay. Perfect. Yes. So now you're going to shake the second chicken. Yeah. And just make sure there are no holes in your bag. Mm -hmm. that yeah, that would be messy. Or that defeats the purpose. Yeah. And then you, I guess, probably be messier than 
The other way. Uh, yeah. There'll be flour everywhere. Flour everywhere. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I love that picture. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Looks fancy. Super fancy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. You all can't see, but I'm shaking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're ready to Both cook. the chicken are together. Yes. Here. Perfect. All right. Okay, so now we have my pan. And that's a cast iron? It is stove. cast iron. Yep. I'm going to okay. turn the heat up just a little bit. And while I'm waiting for my uh, pan to come up to temperature, we're going to just pop these. You Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chickens. In a so bag. Tell me the benefits of buying a chicken and breaking it down rather than just uh, you buying say, the breasts yeah. or buying well, the wings. <laughs> First, you definitely save money. It's a money saver. Okay. Um, and that's what we like. Yes. We like to save money. Yes, absolutely. There we go. And um, so you use every part of the chicken for your recipes throughout the week. Uh, okay. There's nothing wrong with roasting a chicken whole, for sure. I've done it. Uh, it's just that you always have leftovers, especially if you're cooking for one, and then you're eating roasted chicken for the rest of the week. But this way, you have the chicken legs separate. You can barbecue it. Exactly. You can, you can just make cutlets. Yes. You can okay. have just different that recipes uh, completely. There we go. I'm just gonna Perfect. put that over here. Now tell me about cast iron cooking. Okay, so cast iron is the best part about it is that it holds on to heat. Okay, so it's not everyone thinks it's an even cooking uh, vessel, but what it really is, it's a powerhouse of holding on to heat so that so it gets when you- So super hot and it yes, stays super hot. Yes, okay. so that when you put your chicken in, um, you'll have a drop in temperature, but you'll be able to, um, you'll be able to, you know, weather that a little bit more. Oh, okay. Okay, so the chicken in the pan away from you. My oil is not quite up to par, but that's okay. Because of this method, the crust will stay on. Yes. Crossing our fingers. <laughs> it's <laughs> bubbling though. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this while we're waiting since this is my raw guy. Mm -hmm. And we're going to switch right, it out to the cooked guy. Okay, so oh, okay. yeah. It's like it never happened. <laughs> Easy peasy, yes. Okay. Now, if you have a lot of panko breadcrumbs left or flour left, uh, you can just pop that bag in the freezer to save. Um, but if you just have a little bit, then you know, just just toss it because it is chickeny. But if you want to save it, the freezer is a great resource for you. Okay. okay. You can use it for other chicken. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are uh, waiting for this guy to cook, and I'll just tell you a little bit about the accompaniments, which you saw in the photo. Okay. It's, uh, yeah, it's cauliflower uh, puree, which I did by boiling some cauliflower and some salted water. Really simple, and then I pureed it with a little bit of heavy cream and butter. That's nice. it. Yep. Just in a blender or in a uh, food yep. processor? Yes. Or, okay. uh, you, if you have an immersion blender, that's great. Ooh, that's perfect. the stick blender. Um, okay. If you have a Vitamix, that's great. It'll be super smooth. If you just have a regular blender, that's fine. You'll, you'll, it won't be quite as smooth, but it will be definitely delicious. Mm -hmm. And, and you cook it a little more than you usually would cook cauliflower? Um, yeah, you want it. Cook you, it down so it's like really nice. Yes, you do want it nice and soft. Okay. Okay, and then uh, and then for the green beans, nothing could be more simple. You just blanch it in some salted water, green and then you beans. halt the cooking process in a little ice water. And those are going to come into play uh, shortly. So those are already cooked? Those are Two already seconds. cooked. Okay. Yes. So you cook them, mm -hmm. and then you take them out and yes. throw them in ice water? Yes. To stop cooking them? Yes. Okay. Uh, and you'll see this nice bright green color. Uh, yeah, they comes, look really pretty. Yeah, this comes from when you blanch it. The color is always there, um, but the air Chicken in each of the cells. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but the air in the cells obscures the color, so when you blanch it, you're popping the air cells, and then the beautiful green color can show up. And it stays there. Yeah, it stays oh. there. Well, unless you cook it for too long. Unless you keep cooking. <laughs> <laughs> or if you cook it, or if you cook it in an acid. If you're ever cooking 
uh, something green and you want it to stay green, do not cook it in lemon juice or any kind of vinegar. It will turn it brown. Uh, it's a chemical reaction. Oh, really? Yeah, that's okay. why. Yeah, that's why. Have you ever gone to a Chinese food restaurant and they have the brightest green broccoli and you're like, whoa, how would they do that? Yeah. They cook it's it like, in well. baking soda, the opposite end. Ah. But baking soda breaks it down and it makes it a little mushy. So. Okay. You run. You know what I mean? So like, there's that trick. Yeah, but exactly. Then you don't know how good exactly. it's really So good. let's flip this. Okay, we're getting there with golden brown, but notice how the crust is staying on. Yeah. I'm going to try to tilt the pan, but without spilling oil everywhere. Okay. <laughs> You're like, go All right. On. Good luck. Okay. There we go. See? Ooh, Ooh some golden brown color. Golden brown nice. and delicious. Yeah. It smells really good. Yeah. Okay. So. I bet you wish you were here, but you're not. You, <laughs> you kind of are. Yes. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. What do you need next? Um, well, we're going to make a pan sauce next, but I only have this one burner oh. over here. Okay. <laughs> so we're just going to let this chicken cook a little bit more. Okay. I turned up the heat, so hopefully that will uh, that will get cracking. And what else? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't I tell you about the pan sauce? Yeah, about let's the pan talk about sauce. That. Yeah. Okay. So. You have broken down your chicken, you've saved your chickens, and they're in the freezer, and you make stock with them. What do you do with the stock? No, wait. Tell me about making stock. Oh, it's really simple. Okay. <laughs> so you save all your chicken in a bag. Yes. And then, uh, and then all the bones, everything. Yes. Okay. And when it's time to make the stock, you, uh, you can even supplement if you don't have enough uh, chicken. Uh, we, you can get a chicken, chicken backs, chicken bones for soup. And, uh, and use those. And you just put it in a pot of cold water with some aromatics, which include carrots, carrots. celery, okay. and onion. Okay. okay. And then some herbs, if you wish. I like to put thyme in there. Uh, I like you to can just do like the ends yeah. of your onions. Oh, yeah. Like so the ends of your yeah. carrots and all that stuff that yeah. usually you toss. Yes. I leave, okay. I leave the skins of the onion on, and it gives the stock a little bit more color. Okay. I throw the garlic cloves in whole. You don't even need to take the skins off. Oh, wow. Yeah, and a little bit of parsley, whatever you want to put into your stock. Uh, and then you just you let it come to a boil, but then the trick is to lower that and just let it simmer, simmer, simmer slowly. Uh, okay. Yeah, when you when you boil your stock too much, uh, basically, you're, you'll start breaking down too much of the vegetable particles and bones, and you'll get a cloudy stock. So if you want to keep your stock nice and clear, you want to just simmer it. Just like slowly. Yeah, okay. really beautiful. And it makes your house smell fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so these are coming along. Ooh, that looks nice. Yes. There's your pan sauce and the other pan. Um, it, we might need to skip it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, uh, just because we may or may not have any time. Um, okay. So, here we go. Okay, that's your good one. Yeah, we'll just cut into that one. And we'll do the other one. Yeah. Now my hand is getting hot. There we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, but notice several flips, that's fine. Uh, yeah, nothing fell off in the pan. Exactly. So we're just going to move this over to the side. Okay. And we're going to make our pan sauce. I have okay. some house meat. Uh, stock right here, which okay. you'll see it is a little thicker, and that's because of the gelatin. And that's really the advantage of using your own house-made stocks, um, because uh, you get to control all of the flavors. You don't add any salt at all, so that when you make reductions, uh, you control the amount of salt, okay. and the final product is better for it. Right. And then you can salt it to taste. You don't have to worry about it already being salted. Yes, exactly. So what you're going to do is you're going to let this reduce down. Um, I like to add a little bit of an acid to brighten it up. We're going to use some sherry vinegar okay. and uh, just a splash, but we're going to let that reduce down a little bit. So we might play up the chicken without the sauce, but that's fine. Okay. And when the sauce reduces, you're going to add uh, just about a tablespoon of some good butter. Okay. And a butter is an emulsification of fat and water. It's not 100% fat. So as long as your stock is 
uh, boiling at a rapid boil and you whisk the butter in, uh, the butter will stay emulsified. Okay. Okay. And uh, then, <laughs> yeah. And then you're gonna finish it off once it's reduced with a little bit of uh, parsley, and it will just be very beautiful. Um, but for now, we're going to plate the uh, the actual chicken. Okay. There's your plate. Yes. So, as promised, we have the cauliflower puree, which. Ooh. You haven't seen before, but here it is. It's beautiful. Yes. Okay. I heated that up before, and I'm going. I was going to heat the green beans up uh, in the stock, but since we don't have time, we're just going to plate it so you get a general idea of what it's going to look like. Okay. So this is just a little swoosh of cauliflower puree. Just a playful presentation. It's just so exciting. I feel yes. like we're on top shelf. Yeah. yeah. And then it's we're like gonna, time to play. Yeah, just cut my green beans in half like this. And then they're cold, but I was going to uh, heat them up in the stock once they were almost done. That's fine. I'm just going to put those down gently. Oh, they're perfect. They're like beautiful. that. Yeah. And now we're going to grab the perfectly cooked and golden brown that is, that's beautiful. chicken. <laughs> there we go. And then we're going to pop it right on the plate right like that. There we go. And oh, what a fancy meal. Yes. I love that. Yeah. Perfect. And then yeah. reduce your sauce. Yep. Keep whip reducing it. With a little it. butter. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then put in the herbs and yep. then toss it right over top. Yes. There's your meal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. And with plenty of chicken left, chicken left over to have meals like throughout the week. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, when you can fry the chicken legs, you can, uh, again, it's almost grilling season, Anything. so, yeah. Yeah. Barbecues. Yeah. Well, Absolutely. thank you, Carrie. Thank you. Yeah, we had so much fun. It yeah. smells so good in here, and we're going to eat, so <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's dinner time. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much. Thank you, CCTV, for having us. Thank you, Cambridge, for watching us. And we will see you next month at Fresh Ideas from Whole Foods Market. Thanks again, Carrie. Thank